finally have these revealed. So we've got Shan Yun, Ga Ming, Faruzan, and Noel for both Nahida's rerun and for Shan Yun's introduction. I won't go too much into detail about the five stars or Ga Ming. We'll go over just like a brief overview of them because I went over who to uh, wish for and what they do in one video already and I talked about Ga Ming in the Lantern Rite four star selector as well. So I won't go too in depth on them, but let's talk about the other four stars and like the overall value of these banners. We are able to avoid Xin Yan, thankfully, but overall not very good. Um, Noel, everyone has access to. They can guarantee wish for Noel. She is a character that Hoyo, like the Hoyo devs, were almost in danger of making her a good character, but she is definitely far from anything perfect. She has a really long cooldown on her shield. She can heal, but it's also tied to her shield being up and only having like a 50% chance, and then she has, you know, the chance that she can do it in her burst as well. So her healing not the greatest. Shielding can be pretty strong, but very long cooldown. Her energy requirement needs are very, very high too, because she doesn't generate her own geoparticles, which is a big problem with her. So a lot of people that I've seen, especially early on, they want to use Noelle as a just a shield character or just a healer. So they want to like have her in the role where they can use her, switch her in, shield, switch off. And like that just does not work because you have to play her on field to use her effectively because if you want to use her shield anywhere near consistently, you need to attack with her A4 passive. She can reduce the cooldown of her skill so you can have the shield up a little bit longer. But if you're not doing that, then you can't really make her a shielder. And if she's not attacking, you can't really make her a healer. So she doesn't really work as any sort of non-on-field high investment carry. Um, but you can use her as like, just build her as a healer and have all off-field damage if you really want to. But overall, since everyone already gets one copy of Noelle or can get one copy of Noelle already, her value is not very high, especially because her constellations are not great except for C6, which is quite strong, but all the other ones are just meh. Faruzan's a very unique character because she's an animo damage buffer and am animo resistance shred character, which is very helpful for Zhao and Wanderer and a lot of other animo hyper carries that don't necessarily care about Swirl, don't want Swirl or anything like that. Except she's a very, very, very bad character out of the box. She has so many problems, and I feel like whoever designed her probably wanted to make a good 5-star, and then they just kept ratcheting it down until it became this terrible, watered-down, almost useless 4-star at C0. At C6, she's really, really good, and almost like a 5-star character at that point, like a good 5-star. She has massive energy recharge requirements, and you're like, well, how bad can they be? There's a lot of other characters that have really high energy recharge requirements, and they're fine. Jing Zhou has high energy recharge requirements. Uh, Shangling has very high energy recharge requirements. How bad could hers be? I have 305% energy recharge on my Farazon with Fav, and it still feels like it's not enough in a long time. So, yeah, she's, she's not great at all. If you can manage to get her C6, then... Her damage becomes really good, her grouping becomes, like, solid, and then her energy problems go away. She can use a golden troop set at that point as well and actually be a sizable, like, good contributor to a team that wants more animo damage, but, like, C0 Farazan is really, really bad. Her early constellations can feel like they're nice, but they don't solve her massive energy recharge problems or other things or, like, general playstyle problems that she has, so she's not very good either. Definitely not a character that I would say is worth building unless she's C6. Even when I built her, I think she's C2. Um, playing her with Wanderer, it just does not feel very good. Gaming is a very interesting character, also very variable. Uh, that is the theme with these four stars. They all have very, very high variability in power from C0 to C6 specifically, like C1, C0 to C5, kind of bleh, whatever, not really that great. But at C6, like, oh, they suddenly became way better. So, Noel C6, like, really nice. Farzan C6, like, actually a good character. Gumming, he's probably the least, like, terrible 
to amazing in terms of C0 to C6 because the C6 is really strong. It gives him a lot of crit rate and crit damage on his special plunge attacks. And then his other constellations are pretty nice. Like if you can get like up to C4 if you are wishing on these banners, that's solid enough to use him if you are using him with like Bennett or like Farina. But otherwise, C0 gombing is probably not the way to go because his damage is just not that good. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Like they really want you to go for C6 on any of these characters to really make use out of them. Hopefully, if you have some of these characters already, obviously no one will have Gaming yet, but if you have some of these characters, I hope they're const like high constellations for you, so if you do get them, you can get their C6s and then make a lot more use out of them. In terms of the 5 stars, this makes me think these 5 stars will be fairly good. I mean, we obviously know how good Nahida is. She's one of the best characters in the game. She's incredibly free-to-play friendly, really, really good for just about anyone. And I think uh, Shan Yun is probably going to be better than most people think. I don't think she's going to be amazing, but people are saying she's super niche. She obviously does work very well for Zhao, and that is kind of a niche, but she also kind of makes the niche available to anyone. So she kind of takes something that is very niche and then just opens it up for any character that can do plunge attacks, which is all of them. And characters like Razor has very high scaling on his plunge damage. Deluc has the highest plunge attack damage in the game. Then there's like Catalyst characters that don't have high plunge attack damage scaling necessarily. In fact, I think their scaling is the same no matter who they are, but they all are infused with their elements. So like you can do it like a Yai aggravate plunge attack style if you really want to. I think she, and she's also a healer, and she buffs plunge damage, and, you know, she can hold Viridescent, and a bunch of other things that she's got going for her. So I think she will still be pretty good. I don't think she's going to be as niche as everyone says, but she's kind of interesting because she enables a new way to play, and a lot of different characters to be used that are just not really used that much now. Like, you could use Fremenay, I think it's C3 is the one that buffs his normal attack damage. So C3 Fremenay with Xian Yun could be kind of an interesting combination. I think because the four stars are so bad, the five stars um, in particular, Xian Yun will end up being pretty good. Obviously Nihita's amazing. I think she will end up being pretty nice, especially because these four stars are just not it. Now let's look at the weapon banner. We know what the five stars are going to be. Because it's Crane's Echoing Call, Xian Yun's Signature, and then Thousand Floating Dreams, Nahida's Signature. Um, and then a bunch of sack weapons, wow. Lithic Spear, and then four sack weapons? Huh, interesting. Okay, let's talk about the five stars on the weapon banner first. The Crane's Echoing Call is a very high base attack with attack percent substat catalyst. It's got 741 base attack at level 90. And then it gives you, like, I don't know, I think it's like 12% attack or something. It's not a lot. And the passive increases the team's plunge attack damage when your character who is equipping this weapon does a plunge attack. And then when any character does a plunge attack, they gain, I think it's 2.5% flat energy at R1. So it's a, obviously a very good Xian Yun catalyst. Not only decent for her because she can easily get the plunge attack passive and give the whole team the plunge attack extra buff, but any character that's doing plunge attacks with her, which will be any character that you're maining, will get extra energy, and that's nice. Um, but overall, this is not a good weapon. Sucrose could potentially use it as a way for, like, if you're running a Sucrose Zhao team, to just have Zhao get more energy, and that can be valuable. But in terms of, like, wishing for it, I would not recommend going this weapon, especially if you have something like the Oath Sworn Eye from an old event, that's in terms of like how effective it is for Xian Yun, it's almost as effective as this weapon. So when an old free event weapon is about as good as a signature 5 star, it doesn't really make it worth it. Now if you don't have that weapon because you weren't playing at the time, then obviously this jumps up in value quite a bit, but there's still other good free to play options like you could use the uh, Catalyst from Fontaine, which has very high base attack for a 4 star and gives you attack percent as well. Then we have Thousand Floating Dreams, which has very high uh, EM for Nahida. It has 245 EM as its secondary substat, which is really nice, 
but with sacrificial fragments on this banner, honestly, it's not worth wishing for the Thousand Floating Dreams. If you wanted a good 4-star weapon for Nahida and you wished on this banner and you got Sac Frags, I would say just keep that. Like, you don't even need refinements. Sac Frags at R1 is literally perfectly fine because it has okay base attack, but it has 221 EM, which is massive. That's only a, what, 24 EM difference, and then obviously the passive helps Nahida a lot, but between like using a bunch of wishes where you could potentially use 200 plus wishes to get a signature weapon, or you maybe randomly get a Sac Frags if you do want to wish on this banner, like I would just take the Sac Frags instead. So overall this weapon banner I don't think is very high value. Sacrificial Bow, pretty solid for a character like Diona. Sac Sword, really good for Jing Cho, but really only at like R3. Lithic is and there's not too many characters where you're running all leeway characters, so you kind of lose the passive effects. It's a decent weapon, but, you know, not the greatest. Uh, Sacrificial Claymore or Greatsword is not good at all unless you have Navia, and then it has a pretty good value. But basically every other Claymore character does not really care about the Sac Greatsword at all. So overall, like, you've got Sack Sword, Sack Fragments, I think are the two big four stars here. The rest are just, like, meh, or, like, situational. And then the five stars, they're just, like, they're very, very specific. They can't be used too well on a lot of other characters. I say this is definitely a skip for the weapon banner. Not a lot of value there. Um, whereas the character banner, the five stars are great. The four stars can be very good, but you really want them C6. So unless you're going hard for Nahida or Xian Yun, it's not worth trying to get a single copy of one of these characters um, for someone else, in my opinion. Like, if you have C0 Farazan, I would say just, like, don't run her with, like, Zhao. If you really want Zhao and you are, like, wishing on Xian Yun, but you don't get Farazan for some reason. Let's say you get Xian Yun early and no Farazan. I would not continue wishing to try and get her. It's not going to be worth it. Just save your primos. Instead, just like go like Xian Yun, Bennett Zhao, and you'll be fine. So overall, this is kind of an interesting character banner. It makes me think that the Zhao Yaimiko banners in the second phase will have much better 4 stars. Still have not had a Jin Yan rerun in a very long time, so that's quite worrisome. Uh, yeah. If you are going for these characters... I'm leaning yes towards Xian Yun. I want to see how she feels to play. If she's fun, I'll probably go for her. If she feels really clunky, I don't think I'll wish for her. Um, I already have C0 Nahida. I don't feel the need to get any constellations on her because she already hits like a truck. Um, but overall, these banners, not a W for newer players. But if you are a player who's like more established and you're trying to get more constellations to use characters that you really would like, but have just very glaring problems at C0 or lower constellations, this might be nice for you. I think that is literally the point of Xian Yun's development. I think it's a way to give a fresh new playstyle to play characters in a different way. Um, and I think these four stars kind of reflect that because they all want very high constellations. Overall though, if you're newer, go for Nahida. Four stars don't really matter. The the single copy of Jingcho you could get from Lantern Right will be better than all of these at C0. <laughs> and then the weapon banner, as always, is a giant trap, but now is especially so. So I would avoid this like the plague as well. <laughs> There's a new Primo Gem code too? Let's see. Interesting that they released it this early. Usually they would give out a Primo Gem code later. Check your mailbox. Usually it would be after the 4.4 patch launches, but hey, 60 free Primo Gems. Very nice. All right. Cool, cool, cool.